Greetings. Happy Friday. We welcome you to the Steve Day Show here live and on demand on Blaze TV radio and podcast. I am Steve Dace. He is Todd Erzin. He's Aaron McIntyre. We are joined soon for the Dace Group by our very good friend, Blaze TV colleague Jill Savage down there in Dallas. You'll be hearing more from her in a moment. Of course, uh, the Dace Group, Feedback Friday, the show every day. Uh, brought to you first and foremost by our friends over at First Cup Coffee Company, the Christian-owned Patriot Coffee Company that produces a flavor for every freedom-loving American. And it's freshly roasted. They put the roast date right there on the bag. It'll be shipped to you within days of it being roasted. And if you want to get 10% off, just go to firstcup.com and use my last name, Dace, as the code to get that. Uh, Last name, Dace, is the code for firstcup.com, 10% off. And if you subscribe, you'll get an additional 10% off for the life of your order as well at firstcup.com, promo code Dace. A couple of quick uh, programming notes to let you know about. Uh, I mentioned this yesterday. want to mention it again. We are out with the third installment of the Blaze original series on what is happening at the border. Uh, if you want to check it out, uh, this debuted last night. Go to blazeoriginals.com. Use the code border crisis to get $30 off your Blaze TV subscription. It's a phenomenal episode. And there's a very important moment that happens in this episode that will prove to you the administration could act on the border if it wanted to. It, it sets its own precedent right in the middle of this episode. If you want to see why this invasion is at an all-time high, you're going to find out right here. BlazeOriginals.com. Use the code Border Crisis to get $30 off your Blaze TV subscription. And Todd, we're going to have some more about this episode on Monday's show, I believe, correct? Yes. Uh, the gentleman featured in the documentary will be with us. All right. So we will talk about that coming up uh, on Monday. But until then, make sure you're watching this episode at blazeoriginals.com and using the code border crisis to get $30 off your Blaze TV subscription. Also, on a personal note, want to say thank you. Uh, folks, there's over 33 million books for sale on amazon.com. And uh, to have a, 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 there's unfortunately not many Christian children's books these days to begin with, but to have a Christian children's book reach the top 500 overall on Amazon is nothing short of remarkable, especially when you consider we've had no external marketing of this book whatsoever beyond this audience and my following on social media. There has been no other external marketing of this book. So I I just wanted to say thank you guys very much. We were one of the biggest moving. uh, Amazon's got a category of biggest movers. This is the second time that Why Easter has been listed amongst the biggest moving books on all of Amazon. So thank you all very much. If you want to get your copy, Why Easter, Jesus Died for Us So We Can Live Forever. Um, You guys are sending me your reviews. We've tripled our reviews on Amazon like in the last 48 hours. Those help as well. So please keep those coming so people can see that they, hey, this book maybe has a a message that uh, we want, uh, you know, the next generation to hear. So it's uh, book two in our trilogy of books. Uh, on trying to recover America's lost Christian heritage. And thank you all so much. We do still have a limited edition of signed or customized autographed books available. If you want one of those at signedwhyeaster.com, that's signedwhyeaster.com, or you can just get the regular book at uh, amazon.com and please leave us a review if you liked the book. And a lot of you are doing that. And we thank you very much for all of those. Can, Can you imagine, Steve, on Amazon, if somebody comes to this, for the book and don't know that much about you and then they go to they like also buy steve dace and there's nefarious and then let's look into this and like oh <laughs> i hadn't even thought about that <laughs> you should do like a there is there a split screen on amazon all right so, the, so this dude wrote a book where he channeled a demon and then this <laughs> then he wrote about how jesus died for our sins did he do that because he wrote the book that <laughs> channeled the demon <laughs> is this is is this is comeuppance is this is penance yes I hadn't even thought about that dichotomy, but that is kind of wild when you stop and think about it. I didn't it think is. of it until you started reading it. I said, it is, I mean, you've been on a number of best-selling lists. To be on both of those best-selling lists, children's author and horror genre. That That is a unique... It's of course, unique, many children's authors are writing in the horror genre yes, these but days. If not, you get the, my not, drift. not taking the path that, uh, that, that that I am on. I'm yes. on a more narrow road, I guess yes. you would say. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's. I hadn't even thought about that, but since you brought that up, my mind is blown. That is uh, uh, that is an odd combination. But you know, in many respects, this show represents a series of odd combinations. So, with that, let's get it going with the day group.
There she is, Jill Savage. This is your weekly look at the week that was, and it begins as it always does with issue one, bleep, Lord Nefarious says. You use the word illegal when talking about the man who allegedly killed um, uh, Lake and Riley. An undocumented person. And I shouldn't have used illegal. I should have, it's undocumented. Asking anyone to respect me. I'm demanding it. When I tell you what my pronouns are, I expect you to use them. I deserve baseline human respect. You don't have to tolerate me. You don't have to accept me. You don't have to like me. But you do have to respect me. In 2021, you, though, you did say that inflation was transitory. Do you, do you regret saying that now? I regret saying it was transitory. Um, it has come down, but I think transitory means uh, a few weeks or months to most most people. Assuming we can trust the medical examiner in Oklahoma with the case of Next Benedict, unfortunately the cause of death has been released and it is a self-inflicted event with antidepressants and Benadryl. My heart absolutely sank when I saw this headline a few minutes ago because Republicans are going to have a field day with this. And that is not all. If he is re-elected, the former president has openly said he intends to weaponize the Department of Justice against his enemies. Hey guys, it's Olivia. I'm so excited that tonight is the very first show of the Guts World Tour. Um, and before I pop on stage, I wanted to come on here and talk about something that I'm really excited about, which is the Fun for Good, which is an initiative that I'm launching as part of the Guts World Tour. Uh, the Fund for Good works to support all women, um, girls, and people seeking reproductive health freedom. The fund will directly support community-based nonprofits that champion things like girls' education, um, support reproductive rights, and prevent gender-based violence. Wages are rising faster than prices, and now we have among the lowest inflation rates of any country in America. Right now, we stand here as men who refute their Jewishness and the Holocaust being hijacked by an occupation which has led to conflict for so many innocent people. Whether the victims of October the... This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. Tic-tac-toe. A winner. Um, God, okay. She's so um, dumb. <laughs> what are you talking about, Aaron? You said that was like, might be kind of a benign week. It is. That was living hell. I got to tell you, I, I, I mentioned this to you guys. I have gotten like nine Google alerts on the from various forums and media entities about us having the question on idolatry or not about that uh, clip from the Oscars and whether they are bold truth tellers or Tokyo Jews. And what is a Tokyo Jew? I, I, I mean, no one's ever heard of Tokyo Rose. No one got the historical reference. I thought it was actually pretty clever. Do we have to literally explain everything yeah. nowadays? Like every, everything has to be, are we this dumb that we have to explain everything? Every reference well, also, has to be explained. And they're emailing you to ask. And any, we, we didn't even, I didn't even definitively call them that. I just asked, hey, are these, do these guys betray their own nation, their own tribe, or are they speaking truth to power? That's what the question meant. It was to be debated. They could have also Googled it. That, well... I, spamming you is more fun okay I, well tough no 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 these are google fair. alerts people are writing about oh, this on websites got it excuse people me. are My bad. My no bad. people are posting about it on forums they're writing about it on blogs okay you know and I, as if this is some you know far away reference or mention when it's right out of the history books as a matter of fact so I mean, I, okay. Anyway, let's get to it. Jill, as the lady on the panel and the guest, you get double firsts. What was the most despicable thing you just saw and why? Uh, I'm going to throw out honorable mention with Nancy Pelosi because that was just terrible. She's trying to sound hip and relevant and those two words do not go together with Nancy Pelosi. But the most vile thing of that whole montage that we saw there is with Aaron and when you put in the um, the trans death by suicide because they initially tried to come out and say that this wasn't uh, a suicide that this trans person was killed i believe in a bathroom in oklahoma uh by you know just straight individuals mm -hmm. they put that yeah, they tried to Matt, they tried to matthew shepherd the tranny issue how many people are going issue. to go through right. and follow up and say no this trans person wasn't wasn't murdered uh it was it was something else entirely how many people are going to actually go through and read the other headlines right it's always buried in you know like page like 18 of the new york times like they used to say 
that to me is is such a big deal because of the school shootings and the mass shootings that we've been having so many of them have been by trans non-binary individuals Mm -hmm. that they're trying it's so it's so sick and disgusting because it feels like they were trying to even the score and say oh no see the trans people are the ones being attacked and they were trying to flip that narrative in a case where that wasn't even the situation but who will actually know it at the end of the day that's exactly right i mean they're, they're trying to matthew shepherd the tranny issue while we've got trannies out there just murdering people uh on a uh, on an all too frequent basis unfortunately because we are enabling this psychosis and encouraging it as a fact as a matter of fact todd what about you i was going to go there and i will continue to go there and sometimes if the person speaks before me has talks about what i was going to talk about i'll just pivot but this is too important because that what's the real name of the the person who i can't remember okay it's not next it's not next but there's video there's video of that person after supposedly being beaten at the hospital Mm -hmm. and they're being interviewed by at least the doctor if not a law enforcement officer i'm not and that next is completely chill just kind of hanging out there and says oh i got jumped dude and it goes on and on and casual goes home per this person perhaps we I, I don't know maybe jill knows more than i perhaps understands that based on the line of questioning not being believed maybe maybe even uh if there wasn't specific starts to feel the walls closing in i can't i, I can't keep doing this i know i'm the one uh who started this fight i wasn't uh jumped on it if uh, to the degree that maybe the fight was mutual it was certainly it wasn't because i'm trans i mean i'm instigating everything i know this my point being this lie killed nex and this fool who gets up there and says the republicans are going to pounce you you say you care about these people to the point of needing to have parts cut off of them, et cetera, et cetera. This shows, based on your own words, you are about agenda. You aren't about the individuals that you are using as your tools, including, your, including yourself. You don't care. The lie is the point. Not the people. Not whatever happens to them. Not the fact that the lie, in fact, absolutely reached into this person's soul and said i'm going to kill you now it's it's appalling it's appalling so when the other attorney says you're going to respect me you're going to call me by no you're not no we ever aren't going to and if you in all your stupid niceness out there still think you have to to make the world flat it's killing people and sooner or later it's going to kill somebody you care about and it's going to be on you Aaron. Damn it, Todd. How am I supposed to follow that up? We're going to go to the very beginning. Let's not forget this and uh, maybe one final word on this. Joe Biden's handlers wanted to make double, triple, quadruple dog sure that everyone knows they are more concerned with how you refer to an illegal alien murderer than they are about the murder of an innocent young woman in Georgia. It's an undocumented, not illegal. No human is illegal. Even murderers who reshape the skulls of young women. That's just flat out evil. You want to talk about flat earth? That's the flattest earth there is. It's just, uh, and we get, again, I I made comments like this. It just happens so often now. What, What are we actually talking about? We're making sure that we're using the politically correct terminology for a violent murderer who should have been deported five minutes ago. Caring more about that than the murder of Lake and Riley. 10, 15 years ago, this would have been heart-wrenching, and it is heart-wrenching. There would have been a bigger outcry, but we're so used to the evil now that comments from... Biden's handlers channeled through Joe Biden to MSNBC. It's just another day that ends in Y. Exit question on a scale of one to 10, with one being how long the Elon Musk Don Lemon partnership lasted 
and 10 being how long Lindsey Graham would last with Don Lemon. Rank this week's level of total depravity, Aaron. 10. Yes. Yeah, Todd? 10, and don't you dare undersell the depravity coming forward again. Aaron McIntyre, you knew what was coming. Were you just trolling us? He's got another baby on the way. He's seeing things a little more optimistically right now. No, I wasn't trolling. I really thought that was kind of... I mean, it's a 10, but not like a, an 11-10 or a 12-10. <laughs> Jill, I understood that. This reference. is a Don Lemon, Lindsey Graham 10. Well, Oof. okay. Um... <laughs> You said it. You said it. <laughs> um, okay. Ah, uh, issue two in this program brought to you right now by our friends over at Jace Medical. Make sure you get the Jace case. Don't leave it up to people like Don Lemon and Lindsey Graham uh, and the decision makers that four years ago today decided that your way of life needed to end without any scientific data whatsoever. Make sure you have a backup just in case it's next. Maybe next time we have an emergency, it's your medications or your loved one's medications that are now deemed horse paste, dangerous. Take them off the market. That's where Jace Medical comes in. Get their customizable Jace case. You can get their, their, their traditional one with the venerable antibiotics like amoxicillin and doxycycline in there. Or you can customize it with a lot of options to make sure your medications or the medications of your loved ones are in there as well. JaceMedical.com is where you want to go to get this. J-A-S-E. JaceMedical.com. Use Dace at checkout for a discount. My last name, Dace at checkout for a discount at JaceMedical.com. Com. Let's get to issue two. The UK says no. Will we? A bit of breaking news which may be of interest to, to some of you. Uh, it's about puberty blockers. Now, uh, these are drugs that are used to delay the changes of puberty in transgender youngsters. Uh, in terms of how they are prescribed by the NHS, there has been a lot of controversy over the last few years about this. At the moment, they are only prescribed to children attending gender identity services as part of clinical research, um, and they are, are, are not routinely offered to children at gender identity clinics, but they are still offered. Well, the government, NHS England, has just confirmed that children will no longer be prescribed puberty blockers at gender identity clinics. This is coming from NHS England, just broke in the last few moments all right so you know much of western europe we have talked about how much more secular it is even than us in our diminished state and yet we are one of i think six or seven countries in the world that allows late term uh partial birth uh baby kills you can't do that in any of the Western European countries. Now, the UK, you know, I mean, where you have the Archbishop of Canterbury is basically a Muslim. Okay. I mean, I'm not even joking. I mean, he's basically a Muslim. The Archbishop of Canterbury is basically a Muslim. Okay. Muhammad is the most popular baby name in London for like the last 15 years running. And the UK is like... Poor went out, man. We got to stop doing this. This is crazy. This is Island of Dr. Moreau stuff. We got to tap. We're out. So let's go to the question I asked at the introduction of this topic. Todd, I'll start with you. The UK says no. Will we? I don't think so. I think um, I the prism I use for this is I think about this book a lot. And our guest, Jonathan Kahn. Talking about re which one? Return of the Gods? The, the, initial, the most yes, recent the one we had on, him uh, on with? About? Uh, but, okay. but how... No, the, the one about the demons returning twice is... Uh, yeah, Return uh, of the Gods. Was it Return of the Gods? I yeah. yeah. But um, I think the there's more to destroy. The, the, and, well, you understood this, Steve, by writing your book. It's really the same premise as Nefarious Plot. Like, this is this... America is the scalp. And I... So are you saying that it's similar to what happened in Sweden where yeah, that kinda. was the socialist utopia that yeah. we had to be for 20 years. And since they already had all the power they wanted that when they saw COVID, there was no need to use it to get more power. They weren't going to destroy their own, their own right. way of life with it. Are you saying that the UK has gone 
So they can they can more objectively look at these things on just a pure utilitarian basis <laughs> while we are still in the spiritual crosshairs here. And so that we're not even allowed utilitarian ethics. No ethics right. are permitted in, in because of the demonic war that's being waged in our country. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And the degree of goneness in any European country just is not as valuable. Getting America is the whole ball of wax mm -hmm. and how you hold up that dead corpse in front of the entire world, mm -hmm. pagan and otherwise, mm -hmm. and just say, where's your God now? Yeah. That's a fascinating, depressing, but I think uh, prophetic take. Jill? I love the fact that the United States wants to go back and be European and you, you just go and look at like all the things that you were mentioning, like the abortion laws and all that. Oh, if we could just go do what they're doing, oh, we would be so much better off. And now you get a chance to go through and and go and be like those Europeans that you want to be like if you're a leftist. But let's look at what they do with the trans movement itself, right? We're still in the middle of Dylan Mulvaney. He just released a music video this week talking about his girlhood. We get to put on, you know, another show for, for Dylan Mulvaney for, I don't know, however many more months this is going to keep going. We didn't learn our lesson with Bud Light. In fact, instead of Bud Light coming through and apologizing, uh, no, we got Peyton Manning and Emmett Smith at the Super Bowl saying, hey, everybody, go drink some Bud Light. What did Spain do, right? They had a Doritos campaign mm -hmm. and they had a known pedo. They, I, I, I don't think that they knew it at the time, but it was a trans man. As soon as the tweets came to light that this was a pedophile, the next day he was gone. I just look at America and we are so wanting to stick with the trans nonsense come hell or high water. And even, you know, the reduced stock price, which is we thought would matter at some point in time that people care about profits but no even in america they do not care about that more than they care about the ideological movement and that's why when you look at this is the uk are we going to follow the uk no because we still haven't even learned it from a huge corporate level so why would we care about protecting the innocent children from puberty blockers Why indeed. Aaron. I look around the country and there are some areas where improvements and ground is being taken a little bit from the left. Areas like school choice, that's a good thing. Uh, in past years and even to this day, I saw South Carolina passed constitutional carry, Second Amendment issues. Uh, there are some other, there are states that are trying to curtail meatball surgery for minors. Most of them are red, pretty much all of them are red. Here's what I don't see at a cultural level anywhere. There's an appetite for a fight on school choice. That's kind of, I, I don't know, that's, that's, that's not really a spiritual fight. You can make a case that doesn't involve spiritual matters. Same thing for the Second Amendment. I don't see anywhere in the culture where this country has an appetite for a spiritual fight, like an actual hey, this is what God says, and because this is what God says, this is going to impact our policy, because that's what this type of thing requires. Spiritual eyes to see, and I don't see any spiritual eyes to see anywhere across the culture. Jill mentioned the, the Bud Light boycott, most successful conservative boycott in history. We didn't get a damn thing out of it. Well, I mean, Dana White got $100 million. That's true. It. So, well, you know. And he needed that, obviously. A, a movement driven by mammon is always going to, to lose to a cult driven by the pursuit of power. And that's what we're seeing everywhere. Because ultimately, on this issue, we have to make the case, this is wrong. Why is it wrong? Because God says it is wrong. God, God made us men, a man and woman. He made us. That, that has to be the case. And we're not willing to make that case then because we, because, you know, satanic statues in state uh, legislatures and state capitals, they have a right to uh, right to be there as well around okay. Christmas. Agree with all of that. Then how do you explain countries that are way, way more into their post Christian era than we are? Spain and the UK, as you know, Jill and Todd just cited those examples. They were able to make these deductions in their current spiritual. I just think it's the Sweden thing. 
Okay. Like the, what we were talking about, Todd and I, at the beginning? Yeah. Okay. Also, I, I would say, you know, the, the Biden White House has been ga- gaslighting us. Janet Yellen, even in that interview that you uh, heard later on, she's trying to gaslight on, on inflation and how the economy is doing. That is true from a certain point of, of view. Compared to the rest of the West, the United States is doing much better when it comes to inflation. It could just be a case of, hey, we don't really have the dollars and cents don't really make sense for mm-hmm. for this type of uh treatment scare quotes for those of you listening let's get to the exit question so that you guys have time to think about this and pontificate on it we got about three minutes here exit question two years from now so spring of 2026 which outcome is more likely u.s public health officials join the uk in disallowing puberty blockers for children or There will be people in multiple states being prosecuted for misgendering. What is more likely? Because this factors in lots of things. What do you think will happen in the presidential election and everything else? So what is more likely in the next 24 months? Which of those two scenarios? Aaron. That's the latter. Easily. And I. I, You don't think you don't think Trump winning the election alters that outcome whatsoever in your view? I didn't say that. Oh, I'm asking. I don't know. Okay. I don't think it. I don't think it matters. And it's not necessarily because of Trump himself. There are just some pl- places that are so blue. I mean, could you see tomorrow? We could see a lawsuit in San Francisco for somebody trans. Mm-hmm. You know, misgendering a trans. Sure, you could make the case of that if he wins in November. Oregon, Washington, California, New York, Illinois. Yeah. I mean, they 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 go so blue they're black basically, yes. right? You can't tell the difference between navy blue and black. Yeah, I could see that. Okay, chill. Uh, prosecutions against the conservatives are going to be the biggest. It, it doesn't even matter what the topic is, what the subtopic is. That's that's going to be my vote no matter what. And I, I look at it and even you say Donald Trump, if he gets elected, will it change things? Well, his boy, Bruce Jenner, was on Fox talking about, you know, going and getting a uh, screen for your prostate cancer checks. So if that's where that's where we are, even with our Republican nominee, then. You know. That, that, I that, forgot to put that in the montage. I'm sorry. Well, thankfully, providentially, because I forgot about it too. Thank you. Thankfully, Jill reset that. Yeah. I, well, I I saw this in our friend Shannon Joy's feed yesterday. Fox News had Bruce Jenner on as Caitlin to discuss the need for men to get prostates checked. I mean that. You know that Twitter. Why, do account, we even need? Do we, you, you know that Twitter account, Bruce Jenner's uterus? Yes. Now, where's your gods now, Bruce Jenner's uterus? Yes. You know, like they they they've needed to wait like three years to do a, a, another season of Black Mirror because they just what were they were out of ideas after reality, right? Okay. Um, what is the point of you know Saturday Night Live at this point? When, when between Katie Britt, whatever that was, I still can't believe that went on television last week. That still blows my mind. That, that that aired on TV that that, that they yeah. did that I can't I still can't even believe that happened okay and and now we've got Bruce Jenner on the number one <clears throat> conservative media platform dressed in drag to discuss the need for men to get their prostates checked Trump's boy I, I Todd your answer to the exit question before we have to bounce yeah it's it's the latter the demonically driven shamelessness behind all this you saw jonathan turley talking about the fanny willis thing down Mm -hmm. i mean georgia again yeah sure san francisco georgia and he's like how are you rendering this publicly well you caught them both at the same time for the same thing and you're just saying well, we'll kind of give you one of them and the rest yeah, of I you. I mean, get, get, get rid of your shack he, up. This is not a man of the right. Get rid of your booty call and you can continue on with your trumped up, pardon the pun, trumped up charges. But exactly. you kind of see him being Joe Rogan. and I, The next tweet from jo- Jonathan Turley is going to be, we need Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. We'll come back. More of the day group here in a moment. I know so many of you are disheartened that our country seems to have forgotten the importance of citizenship, and that's because we've 
had a lot of our heritage and legacy ripped away from us here in the last generation or so. And Hillsdale wants to do something about that. In fact, you can take their new free online course titled American Citizenship and Its Decline, taught by historian Victor Davis Hanson. And the course traces the history of citizenship and explains how it is how it was undermined in America by open borders, identity politics, the administrative state, globalization, etc. Hillsdale's free online courses are an important component of Hillsdale's mission to reach and teach increasing millions of people on behalf of American liberty and the American way of life. So sign up today. There's other free courses as well, but this is one you want to definitely check out from Victor Davis Hanson. American Citizenship and Its Decline. Start your free course today at daceforhillsdale.com. daceforhillsdale.com is where you want to go. All right, let's welcome back in Our friend Jill Savage here as we continue on with your weekly look at the week that was. Let's get to issue three. Smile, Texas. Well, hi, I'm Christine Nome. I'm the governor of South Dakota and had the opportunity to come to Smile, Texas to fix my teeth, which has been absolutely amazing for years. I have needed to have an adjustment to my teeth from a biking accident, and they have been absolutely phenomenal. Years ago, I was uh, out bike riding with all of my kids when they were little and uh, had a biking accident and knocked out all of my front teeth. And so several years ago, I did a consultation here at Smile Texas and did it by Zoom, but could never quite find the time. Um, And recently got the chance to work with Dr. Davis. Um, Dr. Dooley's always been fantastic to me too, but the team here was remarkable and finally gave me a smile that I can be proud of and confident in, and that really is a gift that I think is gonna be incredibly special to have. You know, I think that I chose the team here at Smile Texas because they're the best, first of all. I would studied a lot of the work that they had done and, and talked to a lot of people that had been here, but also because they were so kind. They wanted to make sure that I was happy with my smile. Not only that the bite was correct and that I liked the shape, the color, but that it was gonna work for me for the rest of my life and that it was something that I could be proud of. So um, for them, they care about people uh, and about that they are happy more than they do about um, just fixing something to get by. Uh, they want it to be perfect. And, and for me, uh, if you're gonna go through a process like this, um, that means a lot to have someone who cares that much about the work that they do. Well, for me, you know, I realized that the job that I'm in, I spent my whole life farming and ranching, uh, riding horses, chasing cows, and then got into government and politics where everything is speaking and interviews and giving speeches. I want when people look at me to hear the words that I say and not be distracted by something that um, I'm wearing or how I look or uh, even my appearance. I want them to focus on my thoughts and ideas and, and what we can do to really make this country better. So. Uh, for me, being able to have a confident smile and, and have my teeth be something that's not a distraction but actually um, is appealing to people uh, will be helpful because I think that it'll make sure that we're focused on really the right points that I want to make and make sure that that confidence shines through. I love it. I, I love that my bite is better, uh, that my teeth are um, a better shape, uh, that they feel Um, better in my mouth and that uh, I can be confident when I smile at people and know that they can actually appreciate and see the kindness in my face and the love that I have for them. Well, so my schedule is kind of crazy and very busy. I remember I got a phone call from Janelle that said, we can actually do this if you're willing to fly in. My husband and I flew down to Houston, got here at two o'clock in the morning and did an appointment that very next week. And then they quickly got the teeth constructed and back. And I came back just seven days later and had the final install done and the work completed. So it was amazing to me how flexible this team was with my schedule. And they are that way with everyone. Uh, made it work with me and my team so that we could make sure that the entire process was done, not rushed, but that I also was able to get back on the road and back home to South Dakota as quickly as possible. Well, when they first showed me with a mirror my new teeth, I started to cry. Um, and I think it's gonna because be the rest of the I, I had an uncle that was an orthodontist uh, and he, he did braces on all of his nieces and nephews, everyone, except for me. And I remember being a little girl and having him say, your teeth just aren't bad enough. Um, But even from that time, I knew that my teeth weren't perfect. 
um, that, that they were okay, but they weren't bad enough to fix. It's just been something that I've always thought and hoped that at some day I could address it and have a confident smile. So when they showed me my beautiful new teeth, um, I hugged Dr. Davis and thanked him and started to cry just because he really does um, care about the work that he does uh, to make sure that it's perfect. And it means a lot to me that something as small as your smile really can change the world. I, th I think that people's first impressions of you are important and I want people to know how much I enjoy seeing them and how much I love being with people and the fact that he gave me the smile to do that now. Um, I'll be eternally grateful. It, it has been a gift to be here at Smile Texas. Oh my gosh. Oh. Sorry. Couldn't she have just made that a lot shorter oh. by, by saying, Trump told me I had to fix my teeth or I couldn't I was, be on the yes. ticket? Couldn't she just made that I a lot shorter? The same thing. Just, just, just how many, how many just, that could have been a 30 second ad. <laughs> Trump told fetish. me I had to fix my teeth or I can't fetish. be on the ticket. And if you don't think Trump tells people, be, yeah. I know for a fact he does. I mean, there were dress codes on the 2020 campaign. He would check ties. I know one guy who lost over 100 pounds to try to get a job with Trump. He didn't. Okay. But he told me he was too fat. So he had to lose Some over 100 pounds. Some say he's still trying to this day. Yes. So may indeed. But I mean, I, I just, just for 30 seconds could have just said, listen, Trump told me I couldn't be on the ticket if I didn't fix my teeth. Okay. I mean, and I'm sure when, when, when Christy Nome comes up. The first thing you think to yourself is she's just not pretty enough. I'm sure. I'm. 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 Todd is uh, men about her age. Did you happen to notice anything wrong with Christy Nome's teeth the last few years? Is that where you were looking, brother? You sit there and say, "Oh boy, look at her teeth." Is that was that the first thought you ever had looking at? I can tell you, standing no. standing three inches from her, as I have on occasion, all I know you don't is, notice Christy Nome's teeth. I'll tell you that. All okay? I know is I could have grown a whole new pair of teeth in the amount of time it took to produce. <laughs> I had heard about this, but obviously hadn't seen it. I, yes. So I don't know. And in the initial, yeah. initially, I'm thinking this. Okay, this ain't so bad. That's what and I thought too. And then it too. went on, and on. Close up of teeth. And on. More stories. Close up of teeth. More stories. All right. Do you have the total runtime of that clip? Yeah, one second. Let's get to the first question while Aaron gives us that runtime. If you watched TBN from say 1998 to 2015 2007 no from 1998 to 2018 if you watch tbn and if you watch qvc in the 80s and 90s okay then you completely understand the white trashing of, of, of the right that is occurring right now in real time it makes total sense true or false aaron true jill and how long was the clip by the way Four minutes. Four minutes. 50 seconds. Okay. Oh, my gosh. The most, I mean, wow, a lot of Beatles songs are shorter than that. Jill? Uh, absolutely true. Todd? It must be true. It, this, is, this is for your love gift this month. This is what it is. <laughs> this, is this is, this is the, the, you know, a previous era of TBN and QVC. That's essentially what's happened to the American right. That's what's happened. And then we've I got mean, we've got public officials now doing out of state commercials. Okay, of yeah, I mean it's just when that first when that thing kept when that thing ran for the first minute minute and a half. I saw people talking about it earlier this week. I'm like, kind of the same thing as Todd. It's like what. What is our problem with this? You know, I don't have a problem with elected officials as long as they're not getting some sort of kickback under the table. You know what? You can highlight the excellence of the people who have helped you with something, even though I, I've never noticed Christy Noem's teeth before. But you can I think it's a good thing. I think it's a civic good to highlight excellent business. That That's a good thing. But yeah, it just kept going on and on and on. Here's another close up of my teeth on and on. It's, and then, what, and then at ends? the end where this is. This isn't really about how I look. It's I want it to be about my words. Well, the endless glamour shotting of her, like she's she's trying to look like she's eighteen. Like it seems like one of the graces finally that women like get to like I made I I don't have to 
try that hard, which is not to say not try at all. Like, Jill, stop me if I'm saying something crazy, but like, it looks exhausting to be this contemplative at her age about still trying to look 18. Yeah, I think that sitting governor should be above the Insta girl influencer status. Okay, Just yes. call me call me crazy, but I think that at least if they're going to try and hawk some products, that they should be in state. You heard her say in that in that dialogue, I flew down to Houston and I was there and it took another seven days for them to install the things. Lady, you're just throwing your entire state, all the dentists in your state, not good enough. <laughs> well, like Even just from a purely like going through and, and trying to highlight businesses, because then she did. I looked on her on her Twitter feed last night and she highlighted like two more. I think it was like a coffee company and an insoles oh. company. Um, that were at least from the state of South Dakota, from what I could find. Okay, fine. If you want to highlight things from your own state, cool. But I believe that sitting governors should be above Instagirl influencer status. Jill with her standards. Yeah, we're we're just we're just white trash cringe now. That's what we are. How old is Christy now? Can I? I don't know. She's hard. She's Gen X in our generation. I will tell you the pictures of her before she uh, before she uh, became famous are stunning. I mean, the difference she looked like the woman you're talking about. Okay, a, tr- a very pretty, uh, yeah, attractive she, well, woman. Yeah, to your point, but, she but, hasn't but understood, done this her whole But was life. comfortable in her age, and yeah. now she is. You know, I mean, it's just it's a it's a it's quite the transformation. But it would have just taken thirty seconds to say Trump told me I couldn't be on the ticket if I didn't fix my teeth. Just do that. Exit question: Who would make a better vice president? Christy Nome, Kamala Harris, or Aaron Rodgers? Aaron. Aaron Rodgers. You think so? Oh, for sure. Okay. He was doing, he's, he's out doing psychedelic drugs right now, by the way. Okay. To- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not a deal breaker. <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time, Aaron says. Todd, your choice. Uh, it's it's definitely uh, Aaron Rodgers. Jill, two reasons: relax and go after Fauci. Those two things done. Okay, Jill. I think Aaron Rodgers is the most intellectually intelligent one of those three. Let's get to the kicker topic. Um, issue four: Which current elected official would you pick to be the next to become a pitch man, and what product slash service would you have them pitch, Jill? Uh, I'm going to go with Dr. Peter McCullough's Spike Protein Detox. I don't know the name of it, but we're nice. going to start with that. And we're going to make Gavin Newsom do it. I like that. There's a lot of people in California. They're not all bad, but they probably had to get the jab. That's good. Good luck, gentlemen, following that. Todd? Steve, this is totally inspired by your tweet today. I already foreshadowed this, but it is speaker Mike Johnson on the importance of washing cannibals feet. Uh, they get, they, they ate us. Yes. Is, is the Mike Johnson's ads? Yes. They ate us. Yes. <laughs> You're referencing my tweet this morning yes. that at this point, Haitian cannibals could, could rape and murder Capitol staffers and be dining on their oh. remains on the Capitol steps in broad daylight. And Speaker Mike Johnson would step over the the, yes. the scene in order to get into the chamber to keep the government open to fund Le- Ukraine. Legitimate grievances if okay. you don't wash their feet. Aaron. There's an entire universe of very inappropriate Lindsey Graham jokes that we could do right here. But I'm unsure, so I'm not going to do that. Thank you. Jill's very disappointed. That's what this show was known for. I am so disappointed. I was like, do it! <laughs> Aaron Mike Pence for Botox got it you know as those wrinkles start to set in it's it's harder to do the furrowed brow so I thought you're gonna go with like what is it Nugenics that's the the Frank Thomas thing there you go I thought you're gonna do Mike Pence for Nugenics there you go and he's in the you know and the ladies like yeah they they get they like it too okay so there you go all right um let's get to predictions I'm gonna break tradition and I'm gonna go first because I think my prediction will be the longest okay and I want to I want this on the record Okay, for next year. Next year's Superman movie that is written and currently being directed by James Gunn. I am going to predict that it is set somewhat in the same universe as the Richard Donner, Christopher Reeve movies of our childhood. And that this essentially picks up 
after the events of Superman 2. If you remember, Donner directed both of those movies together back in the day. And why am I predicting this? Because there are two characters that they cast in this film that were specifically created for that era. Otis and Miss Tessmacher. Those characters did not previously exist. They were created in, for the universe that Richard Donner was creating. James Gunn's of the same era and generation that we are. And that is my prediction is that this is going to somehow be a continuation of that universe. That's what I'm going to predict. All right. Todd, your prediction. Yeah, you're, you're excited about that. I am excited. That'd be pretty cool if I'm right. Yeah. Todd, what do you think? Uh, your prediction. My prediction is that as if uh, the NCAA doesn't have enough problems... Uh, Riley Gaines and 15 girls, including my daughter, are about to just shank them right where they deserve it. Okay. Aaron? I believe Iowa head men's basketball coach Fran McCaffrey will not return next season. His second youngest son, Patrick, is not going to be returning, or at least he said that already. His youngest son has already said he's not going to Iowa, and he can leave on somewhat good terms. Mm. And there's a new AD there. Yeah. All right. Jill, your prediction? Uh, I'm sticking with Iowa basketball, but the important team with Caitlin Clark, I need them to go to the Final Four. So that is my prediction. Because it, this this fun could last for a month or a couple weeks, and I need it to go on as long as humanly possible. But you don't want to watch LSU and uh, South Carolina just bash each other in the face again? That's exciting. And some dude's brother comes out of yeah. the stands. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> For real. <laughs> I I like that. I maybe you do? that's maybe that's uncivilized the the guy coming out of the stands. At least he's acting on some that's my sister over there. She's getting beat up. I need to go stop this. I see I w- I that was my initial take on the Will Smith thing 2 years ago. And then that and then that complete narrative fell apart. And so I'm never going with that narrative ever again. I tried it once. Tried. I tried it once. It blew up in my face. I had to admit I'm wrong and ashamed. Okay? And so yeah, I'm, I'm going to need proof of that narrative before I just grant it as a premise any longer i hear you jill always good to see you thank you you too all right we'll come back it'll be feedback friday your turn for us to respond to you when we return stay tuned All right, back here with Hour 2, live and on demand on Blaze TV, radio, and podcast. I'm Steve Dace. He's Todd Erzin. He's Aaron McIntyre. And you are you. And you can let us know what you think about what we think via the stevedace.com inbox. To access that, just email us, steve at stevedace.com, D-E-A-C-E. You can also like us on Facebook, me, we, and Gab. Follow me at Steve Dace Show on Twitter, Getter, Instagram, and TikTok. And then if you are a podcast listener, if you wouldn't mind, leave us a five-star review if you like the show. Thanks to all who have done so already. You can also hit subscribe or if you're on iTunes, which is where the majority of podcast listeners are, hit follow. That way, every time we do a new episode, it will show up in your feed every single time. And we love to welcome new partners to the program. We want to welcome Backyard Butchers to the Steve Day Show. Um, Did you know a majority of your grocery store's meat aisle was imported? from some random country or countries from overseas um, so you can never maybe know necessarily where it came from. That's where Backyard Butchers comes into play. Uh, They're a conservative Texas-based company dedicated to delivering the best deals in the market on high-quality beef. Your box will include all born and raised American beef from ranches right here in the heartland of America. And again, The most important thing to us is how good is the product. Sampled one of their burgers about a week ago. It was incredible. Absolutely incredible. So BackyardButchers.com delivers American-raised and harvested meat right here in our American backyards to dinner tables across the country. Backyard Butchers will only source beef and chicken from American farms and deliver the cuts right to your doorstep every single month. Grass-fed and grass-finished. The meat tastes amazing. This burger certainly did. All right, so cut out the frustration and go to BackyardButchers.com, all one word. Save 20% off your entire order. 
by using the code DACE. Use the code DACE at BackyardButchers.com to save 20% off your entire order. And if you subscribe, you get an additional 10% off and free shipping. All right, can't beat it. Backyardbutchers.com slash Dace. Just in time for grilling season. Backyardbutchers.com slash Dace. And we welcome them to the program. And we welcome you all to some Feedback Friday. You guys ready to go? Yes. Let's do it. Let us begin with Hattie. She writes, I'm a lifelong conservative Lutheran and a Sunday school teacher for little kids for 50 years. Your book, Why Easter, is the best complete explanation of the entire gospel message I have ever seen for children. Three books in one. It's an excellent book on the Ten Commandments, why our country was founded on Christian principles, that it's the grace of God and not works that saves us. We could not do it ourselves. A great book for adults as well. Martin Luther would be proud. Well, that is some high praise, considering the History Channel voted him, what was it, the second most influential man of the millennium back in 1999 so thank you very much Hattie that is very very kind and uh very appreciative thank you um who is more influential in the 20 in the in the previous in the millennium didn't you say he was the second I, I, I think him and Gutenberg were one and, two. one and two yeah or they were two and three and I don't remember who's number one gotcha. yeah I can't good remember letter. good letter yeah it was a very good letter yes. Hattie. thank you very much very appreciative um let's go here to Kelly, I got a, I got several notes like this, so I, I I'm going to choose two and do them back to back, and we're going to comment, okay? And this is something that came up in the overtime, but and I said when it came up in the overtime a few days ago, I've had I've had several notes like this in my inbox, right? Because you've been asking the, for the last week or two, wh- why are you evangelicals so oh. hung up on Romans 13? What is it with all the questions about this all the time? And and it's it, and you're like, for me as a Catholic. You guys are the ones that accuse us of, of following, you know, the Pope, whether he's um, whether he lines up with the Bible or not. And so I don't understand why those are the same people that are like, do I have to do everything the government tells me? That's kind of your. Yeah. OK, that, that's a great point. All right. Kelly says there are two reasons why evangelicals obsess over Romans 13. Number one, they want to justify their inactivity. Number two, they want to justify their lawless activity. One road leads to the book of Jeremiah. The other leads to Masada. A third option is seeking God and making him God within your area of influence influential. That's from Kelly. Tanya says, you've got to realize by now why you keep getting uh, the question about Christianity blindly submitting to government, right? It's not about understanding leadership versus authority as you explain. It's about trying to find a way to cop out of being uncomfortable. If God says I can be lazy, then screw you, Dace. So I'll follow the Lord with all my heart. If God calls me to stand up and confront, well, aren't we supposed to submit to the authorities appointed by him? All right, so that's both Kelly and Tanya. I wanted to congratulate both of you for being even harsher than me. I had not even considered this option until several of you, not just Kelly and Tanya, presented it and suggested it in my inbox. This obsession on the, that evangelicals have with Romans 13 because we're looking for a get out of jail free card. We're, we want to Pontius Pilate this thing and kind of wash our hands of it. You That's know, essentially well, what the buy, sell, or hold submission in overtime was was trying to say. Correct. So now, now in the Daily Show, let's discuss that. Do you guys think this is a legit? I think we've found thing? our answer. Yeah, I think it is a good answer, actually. Oh, I think it's a good answer, and I find it appalling. Yes, but, which is probably why it's the right answer. But let, before 1980, moral majority, things like that. Steve, you've expressed the Catholics used to be you know, involved by and large. It, the, the, something changed within the evangelical universe where mm-hmm. they were, thought it was okay to be a, a, a part, got very much involved. If I mean, I think it's a combination of sloth and cowardice. I do, but there is past precedent for a faithful people. And again, rightly or wrongly before 1980 saying that political realm, that's kind of for you over there. We're just going to go over here and we're not going to fight it. We're just going to do uh, our thing. I'm just putting that out there for you guys to actually comment on. There is the there would be some who say the answer to that question, Todd. The answer to what changed lies in the topic of what am I going to say, Steve? 
Roe v. Wade? Eschatology, no. Oh, well, eschatology is what led to what Todd is describing. Yes. Um, prior to Roe v. Wade, there was we have no real evidence of any serious um, influx of well, evangelical is a relatively new term. Yeah. Remember even that. Okay, I mean, basically evangelicalism was the term born out of Billy Graham crusades uh, because fundamentalist was bad branding. Okay, and so uh, basically, what was the difference, you know, in in the 40s when Billy Graham launched his crusades between an evangelical and a fundamentalist? An evangelical like Billy Graham was willing is willing to go on radio, okay, and and do interviews on camera, and fundamentalists didn't because you know those were tools of the enemy. That, but other than that, basically, evangelical as a term, in most respects, is just a rebranding of of old of Protestant fundamentalism in many respects, um, and so. It, it, when 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 this term when when this on you know uh, enclave of american christianity was born largely post world war 2 um the dominant eschatology which and it remains the case was the idea that the world gets worse no matter what we do and we have no real evidence of heavy political evangelical influence in elections or culture at all from the 40s we we do and we do in mission work and in evangelism and you saw that with billy graham's crusades but from the 40s until roe v wade from so really from the advent of what the term known as evangelicalism post-world war ii in american protestantism until roe v wade this just was not a significant culturally impactful group it just wasn't and it wasn't trying to be it was convinced that things were going to get worse no matter what. It made Hal Lindsey's The Late Great Planet Earth the greatest selling book of the 1970s, uh, which predicted that Jesus would return in 1988 um, based on the generation after uh, the Jews were returned to Israel on May, I think it's May 15th, 1948. And Roe v. Wade changed that. And then that was culminated with the, the election of 1980. In fact, exit polling in 1976 had most Protestant born again Christians voting for Jimmy Carter. If, you, if they voted at all, because he claimed to be a born again Christian, said that in an interview with Playboy, I want to say that he claimed that or maybe in other places. But I know that he claimed that in an interview with Playboy magazine back in the day. So that's what that's kind of the background of what you're alluding to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. And it's just this feedback loop, uh, this black hole, really, this feedback black hole of uh, interplaying off of, well, things are going to get worse any, a, a, anyway, the government's getting worse, so therefore, and then, you know, there's a, an interpretation of Romans 13 about submitting to them, even though it's going to get worse no matter what I do, it's just kind of this weird black hole of a feedback loop. And that's how I think some people justify staying on the sidelines. I mean, the lack of self-awareness for that, in theory, the world gets worse for what I do. I am an extension of the Protestant Reformation and Luther. What's the point, then, of the Reformation at all? I mean, that should be an obvious question from this point of view. As a, a reform, any reformer, no matter how far away they are removed, what... Go. Well, we're getting into these are all things that are going to get come up over when we start studying yep. Romans, I am sure. Yep. OK, and 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 uh, let me say what I stated about the cultural impact of that eschatology doesn't mean that it's biblically incorrect. That is, I'm not saying it, it's biblically correct. OK, I'm just saying you uh, it's an answer. It's the answer to your question by and large. All right. Now, um, as to. Your other point, what I about what was the point of the Reformation? If things get worse, no matter what we do, what I find ironic about that question is, what did we see after the Reformation? We saw the the, the scriptures interpreted into languages across the world, native tongues across the world. Um, we saw the, the literacy. Uh, increase at a greater at a greater rate than it ever had in human history up until that point in time. Meaning that the 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 things the 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 Reformation by and large inspired, which was bringing um, the scriptures out from behind a a specific religious structure and into a peer to peer relationship with with the with people, had tremendous. I mean, we had a scientific revolution. I mean, we had we had tremendous societal advancement. If you look at what what happened to the quality of life from 1517 to say 1917, 1917 when we entered World War One, 
Those 400 years, scientific revolutions, industrial revolutions, um, I mean, we had, I mean, there was massive growth in human flourishing during that period of time. And so you're right. In light of that, it's kind of ironic now for the people who claim to inherit that legacy a few generations after that to claim, but things are going to get worse no matter what we do. Right? That's kind of... Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. This, this We're going to lose every listener we have. Over. I'm, 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 I should keep all of the... I'm getting a ton of emails from people telling us, cannot wait till you guys study Romans. I should keep them all in a folder <laughs> because we're going to lose every single listener we have over studying that book, I think. I'm, I'm, I'm rethinking that decision, but it's too late to punk out now, okay? I was actually thinking we might need somehow, like how, we have to do the segment itself, but then don't we need a whole segment that is the response to the segment? Uh, we, we're going to have to, we need to get together, like how are we going to kiss up to the audience every week after we do this? And here, because there's no way to, dis, to discuss that book without at least entertaining stepping on people's shibboleths, including our own. It doesn't, it doesn't leave anything to chance, that book doesn't. It just doesn't. I mean, there, nothing, any of you, your orthodoxies will be challenged. You, you will need to show your work. You will need to, you know. We should put three non-political questions in overtime and just make Theology Thursday the entire hour on Thursdays. Is that better or worse for what you're worried about? Yeah, you're not fond of employment, are you? <laughs> Gosh. For a guy about to have another kid, you seem pretty comfortable over there. I thought a, it, it sounded like a good idea until it came out of my mouth. Indeed. All right. Let's get to, back to Feedback Friday. This is from Lisa Holstegi. I cried with you as you read the woman's story last week, detailing the sad events of her mom's death from COVID. I went to my mom's grave yesterday and told her through my tears how much I miss her. I'm so angry no one is being held accountable for her death no matter how hard I've tried to bring attention to it. I know there are so many of us who are dealing with this. Maybe we could be the next group of people Senator Johnson holds a meeting with. I understand vaccine injuries and deaths are center stage, but our losses need to be heard too, meaning from the lockdowns. Thanks for being the only person with a, one of the only, well, there's others, so I don't want to say I'm the only, but we might be the biggest platform. That you know, that's possible, but there are others that are that are using their platform to support you guys, um, and so I want to make sure that they get credit too. And uh, thank you, Lisa, for the note. And um, I mentioned this in the overtime too, so let me violate our edict that what's said in the overtime stays in the overtime for a second time. I got a note yesterday from a um, from someone I know, and, and a good dude. I respect their intellect. And uh, he, he said, hey, I read your Blaze piece about why you are going to vote for Trump, even in spite of what transpired with COVID. And I agreed with every word he said, but he said, I think people have a moral obligation to still uh, have to, we, they should be told they have a moral obligation to vote for him, given what the other side represents. I wrote him back. I have read too many letters from people and I'm still reading them. Who have, who have suffered mightily from the cosmic mistakes Donald Trump made his last year in office, and he's unrepentant for it. So I absolutely, am, am, I in good conscience cannot tell people you have an obligation to support that if that is why you were holding out. And I don't think anybody can. And there's only one person who can really do something about that. And that's the candidate. And it's his responsibility to do so. He's the leader. So it's up to him to do that. Nobody else. Didn't get a response back to that note, by the way. Before we continue on, you know what? Let's do this. This is a good segue to Cabrini. Because this is another topic that within my own ecosystem has been kind of divisive with people who are uh, I'm friends with think I'm dead wrong and others who think I'm right on the money. Um, Cabrini is a wonderfully made film. It is it's perhaps the most it's perhaps the highest quality drama we have produced. No, I think that it actually the more I think about it, it is. It's the highest quality drama that we have produced as an alternative film industry since the passion which is still the apex you may not even including films nominated for an academy award you may not see a better made drama 
this entire year than Cabrini. It is a beautiful film to look at. It's well shot, um, scored, um, acted. It is high end art. And it's absolutely the by far, and I say this as someone who thought Sound of Freedom was a terrific film, but it is by far the the highest quality craftsmanship Angel Studios has produced yet. And I have no doubt that if it was produced by any of the mainstream studios, it would be it, we we would be talking about it for Best Picture next year. But I do have some worldview problems with the film. And I could be wrong. So go see it for yourself and find out for yourself. All right. Uh, it is the story of an Italian nun who came here uh, to do something about the way Italian immigrants were being treated at the time. And if you want to purchase your tickets in advance online, just visit angel.com slash Steve. That's angel.com slash Steve. Once again, angel.com slash Steve. Okay. Josh writes, I wanted to let the three of you know how inspiring your show's been to me over the last four years as I've been a daily podcast listener. I live in a fairly red area of Minnesota, but our school board was out of control and it appeared no one was doing anything to stop it. So inspired by you guys and the Holy Spirit, I did something I did not want to do. I ran for school board two years ago. While I lost, it led to my pastor asking me if I wanted to begin a one-on-one discipleship training with him. Again, not something as a very weak faith Christian I could have imagined doing. Prompted clearly by the Spirit, I said yes, not really knowing what it truly meant. Running for school board also led me to meet some amazing people that were actually interested on working on fixing the schools and cared as much about it as I did. As a group, we have made strides strides with our current school board and superintendent to slow the crazy uh, as, as things that were going down. We are now working on finding good candidates to flip our school board this fall. We also started working on our own chapter affair. That's the foundation against intolerance and racism to engage the community and take back the narrative that the leftist organizations have had a monopoly on these topics over the years. I am also working with my pastor on starting a group with other like-minded Christian pastors and parishioners to encourage each other to work together on local issues. For the first time in my life, I have read my Bible cover to cover. I've continued my discipleship training, and I'm closer to my Savior than ever before. I pulled my kids from public schools, and as a Lutheran, I'm even saying, like, I'm doing the reverse of Todd. I'm sending them to Catholic school so they can get out of the, they've got a sanctuary from the government schools. This is all because of you three prompting me to get off my butt and to do something. If I can do this, anyone can. I am no one special. Thank you to the three of you. I am eternally grateful. And that, folks, is exactly why we do what we do and the way we do it every single day. The story's like that. That's why. And I like how he pointed out how, even though I lost exposure to new people, new things, it, just, it his his world changed. Eyes to see, ears to hear change. That's the thing. Honestly, I, I, I when we're talking about the sports thing and I talk, uh, the sports bros are crackheads, but it, it your comfort. I know you look in the mirror and your teeth aren't being rotten out by doing meth or anything like that, but our comfort right now is a grotesque addiction. And when people are lost, in order to be found, you just and, and this is a biblical principle, you simply can't stay in all the same circumstances. Even if you think you there's a spark of will, I want to change. It, you're not going to just meditate your way out of it. You have got to live a new life. And like you said, I accepted that discipleship thing, not even knowing understanding. That's the other thing a lot of Christians do. They'll only do thing if they think they can in, interpret and predict exactly where this thing goes so they can keep all the deck chairs on the Titanic. Right? No, no. You, you've got, if you really want to change, you have got to be prepared for change. Uh, there is, as inspiring as what you said is, there is even more depth of wisdom in all of that than even you think. How many notes have we received over the last three, four years, especially in 2020 and 2021, that read something along the lines of, well, what can I do? Mm -hmm. What do I do? What can I do? I'm going to step on some people's toes here. And, and I believe that those those notes were sent in a spirit of humility, and they were probably genuine questions. 
But as a believer, when you ask a type of question, what can I do? To me, most often, that is the language of the spiritually paralyzed. You heard that note. What did he do? He did something. He didn't know if he was going to be successful. He ran for school board. And that led to what? A deeper faith? That led to more involvement in the things that are actually important in life? Action led to more action. Action led to more uh, spiritual depth. Do something. There's always something that you can do, guys. As, as much as we talk about the, the GOP being just a, a, a husk of a political party, maybe a net negative, probably, actually, there's no reason why if, if you want to get involved in local politics, you can volunteer somewhat. There's always local organizations. The organization that we uh, lease from, the family leader, I'm sure there are volunteer opera, uh, opportunities for similar organizations in your neck of the woods. There's always opportunities to volunteer for places like pr crisis pregnancy centers, if that's more of your calling, things like th things of that nature. Uh, but there's always something to do. There's always something to do. Just think about what is your calling? What is your forte? What is your passion? And go see how you can spend your time and maybe some of your treasure, but some of your time, which is more valuable most often than treasure, especially with Bidenflation. How can you spend your time doing worthwhile things that are building? Stop asking what you can do. There are a lot of things. Use your imagination and then go do. Hell, just put a placard around you, shave your head, go downtown and ring a bell. Bring out your debt. Start there. Nothing else. That was, a really, that was a really good point that I just made, and you completely ruined it. I know. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. Don't do that. Do what Aaron said. Yeah, don't, don't do that. We'll get blamed, and I'll get more Google alerts. Ripaverse was founded by the Blaze's own, very own Eric July. This comic book company was not created at random. It was created as a solution to combat the mainstream comic book industry. Eric has been rooted in the culture of American comic books since he was a youngster, and he has been a creative in the industry. That was always a dream of his, and now it is realized. But the unfortunate state of the industry gave him the push that he needed to give it a shot and start his own company. He has seen that works, and he has certainly seen what not to do. So Ripaverse Comics are the product of a comic book guy that still believes in the magic of culture. These are non-woke comic books. They're a big hit with readers. You can get uh, Yiro, Yiru, I think is how Yaira. it's pronounced. Yaira. I'm going to get it right one of these times. All right. Can we just call it Hot Blonde Chick? Why don't we just call her that? Hot Blonde Chick. Get Hot Blonde Chick number one or Yaira. Uh, Pre-order the campaign has just launched. Yaira number one is a 90-page graphic novel. That is serious. 90 pages, man. That is a serious work. That promises to wow you with stunning cinematic action throughout and answer burning questions about the Ripaverse's resident femme fatale. Uh, they're hoping to make this the fourth million dollar plus campaign that they have launched since Eric went out on his own. Just phenomenal entrepreneurial success. The pre-order campaign ends May 25th. Orders will go out immediately. Please visit Ripa, R-I-P-P-A, ripaverse.com slash Yaira. That's Y-A-I-R-A, Y-A-I-R-A. And you can pre-order today at ripaverse.com slash Yaira. Okay. Real quick, Todd, this is just for you. Mm. This one. How do you pick a college for your kid? What are the specific requirements for the schools you consider? Um, my daughter wants to go into nursing, so college at some level we required. I'm concerned not only about schools still requiring the poison poke, but also not teaching real biology. That is from Sarah Brown. It, it's very likely none of our three children are ever going to go to college. So not definite yet but it's a likely scenario so i don't have an answer to this question you have some experience todd you're the one here so far so it's on you all the pressure right now go you gotta be willing to expand your horizons i mean they when i got involved in this college trip the number of schools that are out there that in at the division two and division three level that you've never heard of outside your own state my daughter ends up at union university in jackson tennessee it's got a it is a affiliated with the Southern Baptist uh, Conference. It's uh, incredibly uh, orthodox and spirit filled, and it has its own uh, nursing program. Like I don't don't feel desperate be, uh, be based on the limitations of what you have viewed 
as the college college options that that is still out there particularly for what you're talking about uh with nursing now you know I, where did she say she lived this oregon lady? well okay yeah. i mean you're not going to find that school in oregon so i don't think you're going to be after i don't know maybe right across the border in idaho something like that but uh she even asked about the university of iowa apparently has a very good nursing school i didn't yeah. well I as i've said on the show a long time ago i mean long enough ago that it was it, i this was before probably even before tranny madness hit but like if i if i had to just pick sight unseen a your random average small liberal arts school or your very large state school like i, I wouldn't even hesitate i'd pick iowa i mean there's going to be indoctrination either way but a, f a far larger people say you're going to find some of your people at a large state school um so but yeah don't don't expect you're going to become to hear william f buckley lectures either at the university of iowa i mean Aaron, where did Bella go to nursing school? University in Northern Iowa. There's, I mean, I, I can't remember the actual name of the nursing school, but University of Northern Iowa, that's where she went to nursing school. And she survived with her worldview intact. Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing. She was very involved in a local church there, though. That's a key. And it, it, so finding a good one so you stay yeah. connected, that's vital. And you have your kids have to be worldview prepped before they yeah. go into that environment. This is they're, they're, they're not going to build a worldview while they're there. They're going to have to have one that withstands what's there. Your parent, the parents sending them, they have to have their worldview intact before you send be, them there. Yeah. Because they're going to come back with questions. You better have answers. This yeah. is vital. Good and I don't, I don't know if it's behind your question, because this could just be a neutral any parent question. But you, you got to be very, very honest with yourself about your kid. Is any of this question coming out? Like how prepared are they? Are you worried about yeah. this kid is just going to be trucked no matter where you send them? Yeah. That's a different question than maybe a different kid who you know is strong in the faith, but you just want to, you don't also just want to, don't want to throw him to the wolves unnecessarily. That's Excellent a different point. question. Excellent point by both of you. I apologize that I stepped on Aaron's other excellent point. I will come in on Monday with a shaved head wearing a placard, ringing, ringing the bell. There you go. It's on me. Bye bye. Hey, are you having trouble sleeping or staying asleep at night? Is poor sleep negatively impacting you? Have you tried other st sleep supplements with no success? Well, you know, sleep is the foundation of our mental and physical health. When you are sleeping well, you can perform at your best mentally and physically. Proper sleep can also increase focus, boost energy, improve your mood. That's why we want to tell you about our friends over at Beam's Dream Powder. It's a science-backed, healthy hot cocoa for sleep. And Dream has been a game changer for so many. And if you want to give it a shot today, you can get a special discount on Beam's Dream Powder. They're science-backed, healthy hot cocoa with no added sugar. You can get a discount today and better sleep you're going to find has never tasted better. All right, make Beam Dream part of your nighttime routine. You can mix it into hot water, milk, froth, enjoy before bed. Find out why so many of the top athletes and business professionals are now using this best-selling dream powder. Get up to 40% off for a limited time when you go to shopbeam.com slash Steve. That's shopbeam.com slash Steve at checkout, B-E-A-M, shopbeam.com slash Steve for up to 40%. 40% off. All right, let's continue on with some feedback Friday. All right. JC in Houston is a poll watcher. Here are some of her observations after poll watching for the primary in Texas a few weeks ago. You guys ready for this? Okay. I've worked at the polls here in Houston, the blue city part, not the red exurbs, for about five years. Because of a lack of GOP nonpartisan precinct workers, I was assigned a different vote center on Tuesday. It's in an area that's about 80% black, which lends itself to experiences I don't normally get. Here are some thoughts and anecdotes of what I saw. The wave of black Trump voters does not exist. I checked in approximately 60 voters at my station throughout the day. We had super low turnout. Just four asked for a Republican ballot for 
Of the four black Republican voters I witnessed, three were middle-aged black women. Maybe instead of targeting the barbershop crowd, perhaps Trump should speak more to the voters most harmed by the collapse of the black family, the women who are holding it all together when the men abandon their responsibilities. That is an interesting thought. I had not considered. I recognized the one male black Republican voter immediately. He was wearing an InfoWars t-shirt. By the way, if you're doing that in that precinct, that guy, okay, who, who do I call? They're following me, that dude, okay? Follow the black guy that shows up in an 80% black precinct in Houston with an InfoWars short shirt. If you're, who do I call? They're after me, call him, call that guy. Just make him okay. the permanent potentate of Houston right now. <laughs> uh, Republicans suck at getting out the vote and Democrats excel. I witnessed multiple family groups bringing in all their disabled and even mentally disabled dependents and assist them in the voting booth. Nothing discourages me more than seeing this and realizing how many able-bodied conservatives are too lazy to turn off Fox News and get off the couch to vote. Finally, I had a humorous, a humorous interaction that may gauge the mood of at least black Democrats, some of them in November. A black woman mid-60s came into the polls with her daughter. She said she wasn't planning to vote, but that her, quote, daughter dragged me here, end quote. Once she was at the voting machine and into the first part of the ballot, she loudly exclaimed to her daughter across the room and for everyone to hear, I don't know any of these people, but Joe Biden, I sure ain't voting for him. I enjoyed your I enjoy your show, JC in Houston. Gentlemen, what do you think of which of her observations from working the polls on Texas primary day in one of the largest cities in America, top five city, Houston, uh, but uh, an 80 percent black precinct. What do you think? Yeah, well, I would just wish we quickly could roll tape on your initial response to brothers be flipping, because no. 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 That's my response. Aaron? Uh, I don't know. The the brothers the brothers be flipping thing, I think a different set of brothers be tripping thinking that that's <laughs> actually happen, <laughs> happening. <laughs> nice. Oh, <laughs> Dr. Seuss Inner City Poll Watching Edition. This has been a good show for you, Aaron. Friday is normally Todd's day. This has been a good episode for you. By all means, continue. <laughs> yes. I just. What were we talking about? The brother. What prompted this? It I was think a it clip was on Fox. Yeah, Connect- yeah. yeah. From like Connecticut. Yeah. And I'm like, are, are the brothers flipping in Westchester? Are they? Are, are brothers flipping in in New Bristol? Like, what? I just saw the odds, the betting odds for vice president, and Tim Scott is by far and away. Now, it's a quarter, like it's a 24% chance, but he's got the best odds of anybody, Tim Scott does, for being Donald Trump's running mate. On the one hand, though, on a more sober and serious note, that anecdotal evidence there that is somewhat heartening, that last anecdote, that people are like, I, I don't know any of these people. I'm not involved, but I know I ain't voting for the dementia pa- patient. Mm-hmm. Essentially, that's the, how I, I heard it. That is somewhat heartening, meaning that people are not just completely, completely just blind and blindly led by political allegiances, I guess. Again, it's anecdotal. And her, her point about the, the women you might talk to, here's, there's other things in politics that might be more subtle sea changes that you couldn't maybe you thought oh, something's amiss something's changing but until the election actually happens if the, you would absolutely know the ground beneath your feet electorally was changing way before the election happens yeah this is a good by point. what you're watching this in the real point. lives of real people yeah. in inner cities if brothers were really going to be flipping you'd know all uh, again, making this a habit in this hour of the show today. What we were talking about, I believe, yesterday in yesterday's overtime, we would know by the actions of the people making the decisions within the Democrat Party if brothers actually be flipping. Mm-hmm. And I don't see and much no, evidence. I think they're of that. clearly concerned about losing Muslim voters yes. in suburban Detroit. You saw Joe Biden yep. come out today in support of Chuck Schumer's speech yep. yesterday. I think they're clearly concerned about that. 
All right. I think that's obvious. I think that they think they need another historic level of uh, single white women that want to kill their kids. That's why Kamala is going to be the first VP to ever visit a Planned Parenthood. Because that lines up with what you just said. I, I think there is absolute evidence and data for being optimistic about November right now. That doesn't require you to be any form of a grifter. Like I, like I can make an objective case that there are some things that, that are trending in our favor for November as we sit here in the middle of March. Here's where I'm at, though, and you may you're in, and if, if those trend lines continue well into you know, the general, you'll hear me say this a lot. I need to see us, and, and JC's note alludes to it in, in, a, in, in a certain context. I need to see us beat them on game day. I need to see us beat their ballot harvesting operation on game day. I need to see that. Now, I'll give you an analogy. You know, was very blessed. Thank you to Paul again, Paul Engel and our audience for letting it, making it happen. Very blessed to do a once in a lifetime trip to take our family out to see Michigan in the Rose Bowl this year. But I didn't, I wasn't all that confident that Michigan was going to win. We don't win a lot of Rose Bowls in my lifetime, number one. And you're still playing Alabama, you know, one of the greatest programs of all time with the greatest coach of all time. I mean, I understood why Michigan was favored. You know, there were metrics that that clearly indicated Michigan was the most consistently dominant team all season long. But based on what I've seen happen, I've seen a lot of great Michigan football teams go out to Pasadena and die in my lifetime. And you don't see Nick Saban lose very often. And as an underdog, he doesn't lose really ever. So, I mean, we've watched him beat Georgia in the last two, in two of the last three SEC championship games as an underdog. We saw him win. So I needed to see Michigan do it on the field before I could actually believe that they were going to both beat Nick Saban and overcome the traditional Big Ten Rose Bowl hex on the same day. All right. Similar analysis here. I I can point to metrics that would seem to be optimistic on some level for the right right now. But until I see us on game day, because I've watched them overperform polls that were way more optimistic than the current polls are. I have watched them overperform them on game day until I can see that we can that we can defeat their ballot harvesting operation when when it counts. When the, when, when, when the game is live, I'm a no. I have to see it. Any disagreement with that? 2022 happened. You'd be a fool yep. not to have that and I, I, I And it does seem like a lot of us want to forget that it did. And I, I just can't. I mean, I, that, was, that was a very formative event to me in my understanding of what's going on in the country politically. I think the the question that might be prompted from this now is there was always there is always this concept of the margin of cheating. Mm -hmm. How much bigger does has the mail or the ballot harvesting mail and voting operation? How much larger has that made the margin margin of cheating for Republicans? That's That's the question that a lot of people are asking now. So it may render whatever the rights mail in or harvest uh, ballot harvesting operation. It may just render it moot because uh, polls, sorry, 10 bucks. Um, polls are saying that, hey, maybe this might be outside of the margin of, of cheating. I don't know the answer. And that, I said, because when I used to bring that up for years, I said, it, you know, it's hard when you get past three points, the amount of millions, the amount of votes that have to be moved to overcome that in states with massive populations are, it, I but if we're going to have election season versus election Correct. day. They're still counting in California as we speak. It's day 10. They had a primary 10 days ago. They're still counting votes in California. Okay. And what happened in my old home state of Michigan in 2022, final, 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 real clear politics polling average. The final one. These should be the most accurate ones, right? Had Gretchen Whitmer only ahead of Tudor Dixon by one and a half points. She won on game day by 10 points. She won the election by 10 points. I mean, if, if, if we're over, if, if they're overperforming, and by the way, that what's that, about nine points? 
Yeah. What did we see all last year during the, uh, what was the average of the special contested elections last year? They overperformed the polling or their demographics by what, how many, how, how much about was it? That about that yeah. number. About that. They clearly have this thing down. Clearly. And there's no answer for it. There's no, there's nobody attempting to rein it in on one, you know, legally, nor is there any attempt, you know, uh, to match it on our side either. There, there, so this is a massive built in advantage, man. It's a, and I need to see us overcome it before I can predict otherwise, because I don't know what the margin of cheating is now. I mean, if, if we're going to let them count votes in California 10 days after a primary, if Michigan, they can overcome, if they can, if they can outperform a, a, a polling. I didn't say the poll. I said the polling average. All right. Like the, the, that amount of data, they can overperform by nine points. I, I don't know what the margin is now. I don't know. And, and further complicating things, I've seen nothing at all on the right, except for one state, which we can't mention anymore. I've seen nothing at all on the right to try to counter this. Nothing. Despite all the Mike Lindell's gone bankrupt yeah. over this, the amount of the amount of careers that have been made calling this out, the amount of grift that's been raised to do something and about it. Not a damn thing substantively has been done about this for the last four years. So I hear I here's what I know. They control the refs. They get to pick the media that covers the games. They get to choose who shows up in the stands to watch. All right. Would that be a tremendous advantage in, in any in any athletic contest? Yeah, and mm-hmm. that's that's essentially the election si- system we have permitted them to have with nearly with ne- with nary a shot fired, metaphorically speaking, really on our side. And so until I can see that we can overcome that, then, and and what does it take to overcome Nick? Back to my sports analogy, it took Michigan having a a, a team that had eighteen guys invited to the NFL scouting combine, an all time record. So that kind of an outlier, okay. So they had the recruiting advantage, the coaching advantage. You know, what does it take to overcome that? Well, you have to have a historically great team. Well, until I can see we have that, I, I can't get there because I need to see it on game day. Because I, I haven't seen us do anything to counter what they did to us in 2022. Mm-hmm. Nothing. And I watched them do it to us again all last year in off-year special elections again. And we didn't counter it. And I don't see any effort to counter it at all. Nothing meaningful. We're going to print ballots, folks, in this country. We're going, to, we're going to print ballots in August for people to start early voting in September. So what is it, middle of March? Mm-hmm. So you've got, we've got five months, five months to put on the ground the, the, uh, the kind of ballot harvesting system that they have spent the last several years since the CARES Act perfecting. Okay, I need to see it. I, I want to see it. I want to see it. We cannot afford this. I saw a story before we went on the show, before we started the show today. You need 80% more income to buy the same house that you were trying to buy in America four years ago. 80% more income. 80, 80 80% more income in four years. Everybody wants to talk about how much housing values have skyrocketed. Well, no one can afford to buy your damn home. Doesn't make a difference. You guys learned this lesson out there in Carlisle, right? Mm-hmm. You're just sitting on a bunch of equity. You can't do anything with it. We can't afford this. Doesn't matter whether we can afford it. It matters whether we deserve it or not. Well, that's that's true too. One place that is a valuable return on investment for your donation for your hard-earned dollar our friends over at Preborn. They are an outstanding pro-life ministry. They understand truth and grace. That's why they're successful when others are not. Uh, they understand that this is soul to soul combat with the enemy and so they they have to confront women and their conscience with the realization the fact that that is a live other person they're carrying that's not an unviable tissue mass and when they do that a majority of the time over the years that conscience is convicted and these women go forward with having their children and over the years here with the partnership we've had with the blaze in fact last year we partnered together thanks to you guys to save about 60,000 babies that's incredible let's do even more this year and and they understand the grace part too these women need help a woman that's in a fulfilling relationship where she feels happy and secure is probably not trying to kill her kid usually it's the women who aren't and so they're there for these women as well after the fact with prenatal postnatal care all of this is free for to love them both both the baby and the mama 
provided they've got funding from people like us. If you want to help with that, go to preborn.com slash Steve. That's preborn.com slash Steve. Again, go to preborn.com slash Steve and make a tax deductible donation today. Any quick thoughts on what I just laid out before we sign off for the afternoon or the evening or whenever you're listening to us? Yeah, well, you see, you talk about California still counting votes. Did you see what they're trying to do in Maine? They're always trying. They're trying to attach. They're giving all their electoral votes to the popular vote nationwide. Yeah, they're scheming every which way Correct. but loose. And we sit by and think. What, what is our answer on any of this? Just us? like with the jab, uh, we just move on. That was the past. Moving yep. up. Okay. Our answer. Look at the polls. That's our answer on everything. Okay. Better get to the polls and get people there. Romans eight twenty eight.